Um, one of the veteran community leaders, uh, Dr. Aziz, he said today that you know the whole idea is to protest. Does it matter where the protesting is done? Well, um, to me, I mean, he's entitled to his view. He's also entitled to come or not come. Mm -hmm. uh, and many people hold his view, so you know, uh, no issue with that. But we had actually chosen the location. Datar and Merdeka has significance. Apart from the historical significance, it is a public space. And the public have access to it all the time. It is a place that is very easy to get into and very easy to get out, uh, out of. And um, actually, there, there will be less disruption because it's not that near, you know, uh, places of, of business. I actually think there will be uh, um, an upsurge of business in that area when, when these people, when, when, you know, I mean, if you set up a stall selling ice water, you would still, you know, you would make money that day. So, but, but the point is this, it really, there, there, there can be no objection to Dataran Deka. Okay. And we showed that DBKL had actually uh, let Dataran Deka out, even to private companies, and then we, we gave a list of events. So what we cannot understand is why that is different from ours. I'm still hoping the DBK will reconsider. Um, will there be a repeat? Well, maybe you should ask the mayor that <laughs> question. Okay. I'm hoping not, because I think, um, uh, really, I don't think the, I think the government suffered because of the reaction, the, the reaction the last time. So I don't expect the same reaction, but we will be prepared. Okay. Tan Jui Ling wants to know, my wife and I are both 64, ready for our third birthday. Any advice for us plus the thousands of Katwana Raya Malaysians? Well, that's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> advice is, please, uh, we have set out in our website uh, steps you can take. Um, I think the message must go out there that your safety is top priority for us and you need to also take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm. Please make sure you have water, that you have the necessary, uh, you know, um, you, uh, whatever you need, you know, creams, whatever you need. Uh, it's going to be hot, so make sure you protect against that. We would advise that those with ailments, please stay away. Uh, those who are at risk, please stay away. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and uh, everybody has to also be responsible for themselves. But we have provided for about 4,000 plus unit amal. Uh, we've provided for security. We will do our best to ensure your safety uh, but I think come in the spirit of birthday and you will not be disappointed. W would you also advise people to be mentally prepared in the event of any arrest? Yes, I think uh, I think we put that on our website. We also have standby uh, teams mm -hmm. for lawyers for arrest. We have ambulances, uh, ambulances on uh, standby. We have um, medical care. We have about 100 doctors. Uh, these are all volunteers. So we have taken care of every aspect that we think is important. So I think uh, come uh, with courage. Don't worry. Bursi still somehow managed to create personalities. He's got anti Bursi and then Pak Tamat, you know, the, the, the strongest yes. spotlight. I mean, was it intentional or just a byproduct of the. You know, it wasn't intentional. Um, uh, of course, Pak Tamat was with us, uh, you know periodically going for meetings and so on and uh, to me he's an icon in any event mm -hmm. with or without mm -hmm. birthday and it's, it's this whole image you know of, of this man you know over 70 who's prepared to fight for what he believes in now that's a tremendous image that he has but look at Auntie Birthday came out of nowhere we didn't I didn't even know her before this but she took a stand and, you know, she captured the imagination of, of the country, of the world, actually. And these are, this is what I mean. It is, a, it, it is a movement that is actually driven by the ordinary Malaysians, you know. Um, and I think that is the strength of, of this movement because everybody is a hero. Everybody is a hero. Everyone you see on the video is a hero. Right. You know the man, uh, you see one of the videos of the man with crutches who's walking as well. Right. Right. Another hero. So, there you are. It's the movement creates its own heroes in that sense.
Okay. Would you also consider yourself an icon of activism? Because we had someone who wrote um, on Facebook today, uh, on FMP's uh, Facebook, that uh, there is nothing ambiguous about Amiga. She is the incarnation of the wrathful but benevolent goddess of righteousness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's really kind. And I'm very, very, I'm very humbled actually by that. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, it, because you take a stand, it, it happens. I mean, it happens. But seriously, the credit is not entirely mine. Um, there's so many people, the steering committee, who are behind the scenes, who are working very hard, and ultimately, and you will find this out, that, that, that everybody will be a hero on the day. Have we ever had a movement where the Malaysian diaspora has come together in this way? You know, the diaspora as well as students, as well as temporary visitors overseas. Have we ever had such a movement? Uh, I mean, this is unity, Malaysian unity at its best. So, um, yes, so in that sense, wherever you go in the, in the world, you just have to say you're from Bursi and, and you, will, you will get some, you know, <laughs> you will definitely be, you know, uh, you will definitely have friends. Okay. Um, Faisal is asking a question, um, I'm not sure if, it, I think you've really answered this, sure. but um, uh, she wants to know, what is her real objective in not accepting the offer to change the venue to Stadium Merdeka? I think uh, the real objective is the... <laughs> well, the only, is the key, key word as well. The real objective is, as I say, to have less chaos. We actually think there's going to be less chaos by not moving. Mm. Uh, and I think the authorities will see that, you know. Uh, because if we move, I can guarantee you people will gather at both places. Okay. There will be chaos. Okay. And, um, got one more question? Am well, I married? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I have two children. <laughs> Do you have any relation to students or Occupy Dataran? No, no, I, I don't, but I support what they're doing, you know. Um, look, this is the exuberance of youth at its best. As I said before, I have always felt that my generation, I'm 55 now, um, I feel we failed, we failed the next generation. And, um, um, but, and, and we didn't fight hard enough mm. during our time when, when abuses were taking place and we were losing rights. But the youth now are not waiting. They're fighting for themselves. So I think uh, it is a wonderful phenomena that, you know, uh, the years of repression in our educational system can still produce students like this who, who are prepared to stand up for their rights and support them fully. Okay. Uh, Occupy Dataran is different from the students, though, I think. Yeah, two different groups. Okay, Sunline's question. Worst case scenario is boycotting a rigged general elections an option? No. I don't believe at all in boycotting the elections, no matter what happens. I would actually say more people should go out and vote because, and that's the message we are sending out, which is, if these elections go on, um, we want to push for 100% voter turnout. That's our June 100 campaign because voter turnout can mitigate some of the fraud uh, because you know how many people can you create. So mm -hmm. for me, boycott is not an option. And would you consider Bursi 4, it's, it's still that nothing is done, you know, it's there. Well, what's next after this? Well, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Mm. Um, I think it would be a mistake to ignore Bursi. Um, and I think the government is, is perhaps um, watching to see what's happening, going to happen. And I suppose um, we will have to wait and see what their reaction is. So I wouldn't want to say just yet what the next steps are. I really would like to see what the reaction is. But I think we sincerely, the message from us sincerely is please delay the 13 general elections um, until full reform is, uh, occurs. Last year, the chaos occurred because of the overreaction of the police. Uh, it didn't happen because of the Russian supporters. This year, we would say, and this what we said last year as well. There may be people who will try and stir up trouble. If there are, the first thing we will do is hand them over to the police. Nobody who is aggressive will be allowed to continue being aggressive. We will take action. And that is, this is what our security is there for, to protect the people as well as to make sure troublemakers 
are handed over to the police. We will not tolerate aggression or violence by anyone. Are you able to guarantee safety? Well, you know what? This is the thing. As responsible organizers, we have done our best. But to me, the police should do their job too. Security of the nation is in their hands. If the government is genuine in saying that we, we encourage peaceful assembly, then they must do what uh, other countries who encourage peaceful assembly do, for the UK, whatever. They, the police actually ensure that it's peaceful. The police are there to facilitate. So what they are now trying, what the suggestion seems to be is, you make sure it's peaceful. Right. We, if anything happens, it's your fault. Right. Which is completely against a government saying they support peaceful assembly. What do you think will be the immediate effect of Versa 3.0 and how will the EC and the government respond after Saturday? I can't answer that question, but I, I suppose I can anticipate how the EC will okay. respond because their standard response has been there's nothing wrong, mm. as you know. Um, so that they will probably continue to say that. But I'm hoping that the government will respond positively. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that they will do something about delaying the general elections. Now, um, they did this in Bangladesh. They actually delayed the general elections so that the roads could be cleaned up. Uh, so I think that is something that we would want okay. to see happen. And, and a delay in the general elections, would you think it would be a few months or you know, would you expect it to be Yeah, okay, it has to be done by 2030. Yeah, of course. Um, so it really, if we work very hard mm -hmm. from now, cleaning up the roads and, and at least putting in some safeguards, should we, it, we should be able to achieve that in, by the end of the year or six to eight months. It really depends on how, how many resources you put into it. Uh, civil society is prepared to help. We have always offered our help in the roles and the checking, you know, the kind of checking verification that's needed. We've always offered help. We have experts as well who, who do it. So it can be done. Everybody can work together and get it done. Would you be contested? Yeah. I think I asked you this the last time. I've been asked it for 50 times. 50 <laughs> times my answer was no. And for the 51st time, my answer is still no. <laughs> then the next question would be why not? I've never been interested in politics. Seriously, I have. Um, so, uh, and I, I will not change my mind on that. Uh, okay, we did a simulation. Standing up, 100,000. Sitting down, about 70. There will be spillage. Do you think they'll uh, put up roadblocks later tomorrow? Could be, and they've already put up barriers. That's the that, that thing. Uh, How about locking up the entire place? Maybe not. The other thing I think we should have asked you is, uh, do you think they're going to have uh, orders taken against you guys, the leaders? Mm -hmm. they, take last time they could. I think, though, they won't repeat the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. They won't repeat. Yeah. What's interesting about DBKL, they're not acting under the Peaceful Assembly Act. Mm. They're acting under, under the law. By law. Yeah. Yeah. By law, they're ignoring the act. What they're doing now is they're telling all the bus operators they're, they're putting pressure on them not to bring not to yeah, yeah. supporters up. But same thing happened last year, last yeah. so people will come. The more you do this, you know, so on the one hand, the open and public there, oh, we support, support, yeah. but actually they're working behind the scenes to stop it. Yeah.